What is the Bible? What is it worth? Basic instructions before leaving Earth. Life is full of struggles and it is hard. But we are made in the image of God. Lord, I have to praise you to the moon and back. I don't see anything wrong with that. It's me you help. It's me you kill. It's me you move. It's me you groove. It's me you touch. I love you so much. Oh, my Lord, I have to say thank you. Open your eyes. What do you see? Have you inventoried your life lately? Oh yeah, I have something else to say. Welcome to HPS and DWJ. Oh lordy lordy, to God goes the glory. God goes the glory, the glory, glory. All right, welcome to HBS and DWJ Podcast. I am Jerry Joyce, your host. Our mission, to provide the knowledge that will train sisters and brothers in Christ to spread God's love and create disciples. Our vision, to share all resources that will aid in the knowledge necessary for the building of God's kingdom. The adversary does not know what to do with those who possess integrity. We are not human beings on a spiritual journey. On the contrary. We are spiritual beings on a human journey. With that being said, we will open this Holy Bible study session up with prayer, so please join in. O Holy Eternal Father, Son, Holy Spirit, it is once again that we come unto you as humble as we know how, realizing that, O Heavenly Father, you have filled the world with beauty. Open our eyes to behold your gracious hand in all your works, that Rejoicing in your whole creation, we may learn to serve you with gladness. For the sake of him, through whom all things were made, your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, thank you for your continued graces and mercy. We pray these things in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. All right, our scripture of the week is Hebrews chapter 10. Verses 14, well, verse 14, King James Version. For by one offering he hath perfected for ever them that are set sanctified. All right, now, sacrifices under the old covenant had to be repeated over and over and over and over. And this, according to the writer of Hebrews, is a deliberate aspect of the old covenant covenant as ordained by God according to Hebrews chapter 9 verses 6 through 10. Now these animal sacrifices could temporarily cover human sin but could not remove it. And this repetition along with other aspects of the old covenant was meant to point us towards Jesus Christ who fulfilled the covenant, uh, the new covenant. And um the new covenant was promised by God to be something different from uh, the Levitical priesthood and anchored inside the hearts and minds of the people, according to Hebrews chapter 8, verses 7 through 13. All right, recently, the writer of Hebrews has been uh, specifically referring to repetitive animal sacrifice, which is inferior to the single sacrifice given by Jesus Christ. Now, Psalm chapter 40 was quoted to show that God himself contrasted offerings and sacrifices with the use of a body to accomplish his will. The work Jesus did on the cross then becomes the fulfillment of that promise. The use of the term perfected here should be taken in the usual biblical context as a reference to maturity and completion. This is not a reference to sinlessness, since even Jesus, who had no sin, according to Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15, is said to be perfected in a sense by God as he performed the Father's will. And this is in accordance to Hebrews chapter 2, verse 10. Instead, this echoes the idea presented in Hebrews chapter 7, verse 25, that Christ 
sacrifice can do completely what the animal sacrifices of the old covenant could only do partially. Now our topic today is God gives Abraham a new name discussion. Abraham's story jumps ahead 13 years from the end of the uh, previous chapter. And as far as we know, Abraham has not heard from God, at least in any special way, since the birth of his son Ishmael to Sarai's servant girl, uh, Hagar. And the Lord now appears to a 99-year-old Abram who is in his waiting has decided that perhaps Ishmael is the child of God's covenant promises after all. God will make clear to Abram that that is not the case. For the first time in scripture, God refers to himself as God Almighty, El Shaddai. And this is a name meant to establish God's power here on earth, even over nature and in all and in the life of Abram and Sarai as well. And God begins this new contract or contact rather with Abram with two commands, walk before me faithfully and be blameless. Literally, God commands Abram to walk in the Lord's presence and to be of such good character before God that no valid charge of wrongdoing can be brought against him. This is unlike other times when God spelled out his promises to Abram. He begins this conversation by placing expectations on Abram to live a life worthy of his covenant relationship with God. And we're not meant to understand that Abram was sinlessly perfect or that he could become so. This only means that God expected Abram to center every aspect of his life around honoring the Lord. God now restates that he will make his covenant between himself and Abram and will multiply him exceedingly and greatly by increasing Abram's uh, numbers. And the next verse or the next verse says, will reveal that Abram received this contra- uh, this covenant promise uh, from God very reverently. And at the same time, he also wants to understand how this could happen. After all, Abram was 99 years old at this time, according to Genesis chapter 17, verse 1. And um, it has been 13 years since the birth of his only child, Ishmael. Through this, his servant Hagar, in accordance to Genesis chapter 16, verse 16. And it has been 23 years since God began making these repeated promises, according to Genesis chapter 12, verse 4, which do not seem to line up with Abram's everyday experience. God has asked Abram to continue to believe. This time, though, God will ask for even more. Abram's response in this verse is entirely appropriate. He fell face down before the Lord. Throughout history, in many cultures, this has been the ultimate expression of humility and submission. In one gesture, Abram communicated to God that he would receive all that God was saying with humility and great reverence. Although God does uh, not require it of us, Many believers today continue to approach God in prayer while kneeling or lying face down on the ground. Later, when God provides details on how he will uh, accomplish his promises, Abram will once again fall on his face. At that point, however, it would be in laughter and disbelief. God's suggestion that a 99-year-old man and a barren 89-year-old woman will have a child would be quite a shock according to Genesis chapter 17, verse 17. Now, to this point, Abram has demonstrated a willingness to honor God and to follow him even when he's unsure of every detail. Now, God continues the covenant promise. Specifically, God says Abram will be the father of many nations. While God has promised before this uh To give, uh, while God had promised before this to give Abram countless offspring, this is the first time God describes Abram as the patriarch of multiple nations. And it won't be the last time, though. In fact, in the next verse, God will uh, 
declare a change in Abram's name, signifying this great future. Now, uh, finally, after 23 years, according to Genesis chapter 4, as well as Genesis chapter well, Genesis chapter 12, verse 4, as well as Genesis chapter 17, verse 1, and many struggles, the man known as Abram will take on the name by which he is truly remembered, Abraham, in Genesis chapter 17, verse 5. And now in modern times, specific names are not always thought to be very important. Parents typically choose names based on how they sound or how they look in writing. The meaning of names for the modern era is almost never an important consideration. However, in ancient times, names were often given by parents to describe the lives they hoped their children would fulfill. In other cases, they were used as declarations of past events. And now God's change of Abram's name at the age of 99 years old was highly significant. The name Abram, given by Abram's father Terah, means exalted father. It was likely meant to suggest that Abram came from a royal line. Now, this new name, Abraham, sounds similar to the Hebrew phrase and meaning father of a multitude, exactly matching God's revelation of what Abram would become. Now, this name change required another act of faith from Abraham. He would have asked people to call him Abraham. He would have had to ask people to call him Abraham to refer to him as a father of a multitude. Now, would he feel foolish telling people of his new name as a 99-year-old man with just uh, one son born of a servant girl? Or would his new name increase his confidence that God's promise was reliable? Hmm, you tell me. Do you have the complexion for the protection? It is now time for our life reflection. All right. Uh, the Lord told Abram, I am El Shaddai, God Almighty. Serve me faithfully and live a blameless less life. God has the same message for us today. We are to obey the Lord in every, as re in every respect and aspect of our life because he is God. That is reason enough. If we don't think the benefits of obedience are worth it, consider who God is, the only one with the power and ability to meet our every need. Why did God repeat his covenant to Abram? Hmm? Twice before, he had mentioned this agreement in Genesis chapter 12 as well as Genesis chapter 15. Here, however, God was bringing it into focus and preparing to carry it out. He revealed to Abram several specific parts of his covenant. First of all, God would give Abram many descendants. Secondly, many nations would descend from him. Third of all, God would maintain his covenant with Abram's descendants. And fourth, God would give um, Abram's descendants the land of Canaan. Now, uh, in the Bible, people's names were very important. A, a name often described a person's character or experience. Therefore, shortly before the promised son was conceived, God changed Abram's name, which means exalted father, to Abraham, which means father of many or father of a multitude. All right, now, from this point on, the Bible calls him Abraham. Check this out. 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 All right. Hmm. If you happen to find yourself wanting to support a minority business, try Pyravive. Pyravive is a natural weight loss supplement and is said to be quite effective in supporting healthy weight loss. It is made using some of the best and most powerful natural ingredients known for their effect on the body. It is a result of years-long research and the benefits of supplement 
are not limited to weight loss only. The formula is effective in supporting different functions of the body and thereby helps to ensure its overall wellness. The ingredients in Purevive and its effects are backed by science and they are 100% natural in origin. There is no mention of any kind of artificial ingredients in the supplement that are harmful to the body. It is made in an FDA registered state-of-the-art facility and the manufacturing processes of the supplement are certified by good manufacturing practices, also known as GMP. Pirivive weight loss aid comes in the form of capsules and there are 30 capsules each in every standard bottle of the supplement. You can find this business online at puravive.com. That's P-U-R-A-V-I-V-E dot com. Puravive.com. Hey, bro. What time is it, man? It's now time to answer comments from HBS and DWHA website. Mm-hmm. We ready. So just scream for us. Scream for us. One, two, three, scream. All right, we got that scream out the way. It's time to start it up. Crank it up. Time to answer some comments from the HBS and DWJ website. All right, first of all, we're going to start with Stefan Ivanov. Stefan Ivanov says... Just a note on the side. I found it interesting that old nations had a cultural thing in calling their children a synonym for what they want and think they will become. Here in Bulgaria, we still do this, but I find it goes away with the younger generation. The source is me, Stefan. It means wreath, and it's held three days after Christmas on the 27th of December. We have name days here for all the Bulgarian names. Those symbolic dates and names were put together perfectly by the older generations, and I think this is part of the topic. You see, at 99 years old, now Abram can go from a father of many to a multiple father. I explain this as a game. If he is Abraham, father of nations, He can be seen as leader or king. He owns a big domain. And at 99, he can have more, one more son, which is viewed in that same time as heir. How do we look at the children as possibilities? Something new and full of potential. hmm? The child can grow and become someone or surpass me as a parent. If we use the same way of thought, we can see that now. The father of many can become the father of kings, the emperor. We stick to the game rule, the father of multitude. A captivating story again. This, of course, isn't the only option for finding a meaning in the story. Genesis is so cool for that. It has so many core movements or so many core moments connecting to other moments from different parts of the book. I absolutely loved it. All right, well, hello there, Stefan Ivanov. Uh, Thank you for your interest in this HBS and DWJ information platform. Thank you for stopping by as well as your participation. Godspeed to you and blessings, my friend. All right, let's move it along to Angel C903. Angel C903 says, Hello, I don't know if Abraham came from a royal lineage, but according to the book of Jubilees, Torah worked for the king of Babylon and made idols for, for the people. And it's funny how names reveal your destiny. Before his name meant exalted father, probably that he was the glory of his father, but now... His name means father of many, meaning that he would father many children in the faith. This is amazing. All right. Hello, Angel C903. Thank you for taking the time to comment on this portion of uh, study in this episode. And 
blessings, my friend. All right, let's move it along to Jake Zachary. Jake Zachary says, The story of Abraham epitomizes the struggle we go through trusting God. We're all excited in church or listening to a compelling sermon. But when action is required to support the faith, it is our nature to be doubtful or overthink the process just like Abraham did. Trusting the process is one of my favorite sayings, and we can use this story as a lesson to do just that. Trust his process. Thanks for the Bible study. All right. Hello there, Jake Zachary. Thank you so much for your time. I agree with you 100%. Trusting the process will get us where we should be in life with no strings attached. You are most certainly welcome for the Holy Bible study. And blessings, my friend. All right, let's move it along to Pasendu Demanka. Pasendu Demanka says, Your exploration of Abram's name change and its significance in the context of God's covenant is thought-provoking. It's fascinating how a change in name symbolizes a deeper spiritual transformation and a renewed purpose. Have you encountered similar instances in other religious texts where a name change signifies a significant shift in someone's life or purpose? Hmm? I find these symbolic changes across different faiths incredibly intriguing. In my personal experience, I've seen name changes in cultures to mark important life stages or shifts in identity. This connection between a change in name and a change in destiny resonates across various traditions. How do you think this transformation through renaming correlates with our modern understanding of personal growth and transformation? Hmm? Your exploration of these historical and spiritual aspects is enlightening and prompts deeper reflection. Thank you for sharing this insightful perspective on Abraham's name change and its spiritual implications. All righty, righty, righty. Hello and welcome back, Pesindu. Name changes most often given by God establishes a new identity and a purpose God wants his user to embody. And um, in the Old Testament, we see the changing of names for the purpose of cultural assimilation. All right. Now, as with Hananiah, Mishael and Azariah, they had to uh, they had to change their Hebrew names to Chaldean names, and which were Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. Now, in the New Testament, it was common for a Jew to have two names. One name was Hebrew and one name was Greek. In fact, the Apostle Paul never changed his name. Saul was his Hebrew name and Paul was his Greek name. Now, the name given by God is the name that will lead us to God's promises. Now, God changed Abram's name to Abraham, Sarai's to Sarah, Jacob's to Israel and Simon's to Peter. Through those names, God gave new beginnings, new hopes, and new blessings. So thank you so much for continuing to stop by, and you are welcome for the sharing of this information. And blessings, my friend. All right, let's move it along to Abstract Allen. Abstract Allen says, Hello, HBS and DWJ. Many blessings to you. I am astounded by the many names and descriptions of the Lord. Like the lyrics to El Shaddai, Almighty Father. El Elyon, Na Adonai, Love Worth Finding. Please, my Lord God Most High. Erkamaka, Na Adonai, I love you, my Lord. Yeshua, Hamashiach, the hits keep coming. So, how could you not believe that God would bless you with a son, regardless of your age, if you have literally spoken to God? That, of course, is coming from somebody who wasn't there. Jesus spoke to his disciples there in the flesh, performed miracles for the masses, and yet was crucified. I am confused about how people reacted back then, but I'm not sure what I would do either. Sorry, got off on a tangent. I love how you broke down each verse. It it's, was actually very helpful and revealing. I was browsing your site and I will stop again. Stop in again. 
it looks like you have a bunch of content stored up. Thank you, respectfully. Alan, a.k.a. Abstract Alan. All right, hello again there, uh, Alan, a.k.a. Abstract Alan. There are a lot of changes that must be made and challenges that must be overcome for growth to begin to take place in order to become any type of example as believers of God. All right. But no, believe me, I really do work extremely hard on making sure I am sharing all of the information that I can for those who are trying to study the Holy Bible in depth. And thank you for your participation and for reading as well as commenting and for considering this a website worth visiting over and over again. Many blessings to you as well, my friend. All right. But for now, that's what God gives Abraham a new name discussion is all about. All right. With that being said, we will close out with prayer. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, guide the nations of the world into the way of justice and truth and establish among them that peace, which is the fruit of righteousness that they may become the kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. All right, thank you all for tuning in. Thank you all for your support. HBS and DWJ is eternally grateful. And please stay tuned for other discussions of the show. You can message HBS and DWJ at 704-412-8692. That's 704-412-8692 704-412-8692 and I would like to thank Our Heart Radio for this opportunity and you can find HBS and DWJ Podcast most anywhere you receive your podcast you can also find HBS and DWJ on our website at GodandOurLivesEveryday.com that is GodandOurLivesEveryday.com or just hashtag HBS and DWJ that's hashtag HBS and DWJ don't forget to check out the HBS and DWJ store on God and Our Lives Every Day.com. And you can also find us on Facebook at HBS and DWJ. Now, to bless this ministry with a donation, you can cash out HBS and DWJ. That is the money sign or the dollar sign, capital HBS, lowercase a n d, capital D, lowercase w, and capital J. And if you want to do uh, bless this ministry with a donation through PayPal, it'll be the at sign, capital HBS, lowercase a n d, capital D, lowercase w, and capital J, which is at HBS and DWJ. All right, thank you in advance for your donations. It's going to help build this platform out and uh, turn it into what whatever God wants it to be so it's going you know it's still in the building process as I know there's a lot of content on the website but it's going to only continue to grow because um, I'm definitely using uh, putting my tithes in so um, anybody that wants to help donate it, it can only build it out to be greater than what it is already all right and remember to put God first and everything else will follow. And appreciate your steps in life because they are the reasons you can look back at where you came from. So to God goes the glory, the glory, glory. Truth, basic instruction before leaving earth story. To God goes the glory, the glory, glory.